What's up guys, I'm from Colab here, and welcome back to the fourth video in our React series. This one will be on using props in React. So, we've discussed a little bit about components up until this point, and we know that they're great for code reusability and just kind of separating our codes, logic for making things a little, a little bit more readable and clear. But the issue is that you have these separate components, but what if you have a variable that needs to be used across multiple components? And React actually has a great feature for this called props. So props are essentially just like arguments passed down to components, and it creates a sort of parent-child-like structure. So let's say that I have my parent component like index.js, it has a child component that we call app.js because app is actually instantiated and called from inside of index. And if app has its own component that, that it calls inside of itself called like counter display, counter display thus becomes a child of app. So app can pass down the variables that it owns, via props to count display so that its child can now access them. And this process, it's, it's actually fairly simple and straightforward. So the first thing that we're gonna do, do here is create a new file in, in, inside of our source folder and just call it like count display.js. And we're just gonna do something very, very basic here. We're just gonna write a function and we're just gonna call it count display. I'm just gonna return some very, very basic JSX. And I'm just gonna have like a little div tag with a little like H1 inside of it. And I'm just going to say, like, like, this is my current account. Now, I'm not going to display just yet, but that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm just going to export default account display. So now I have, just like that, a regular exportable function that has an h1 tag. Now, there's no props logic in it yet, but let's just get that displayed. So if I wanted to display that, I can actually just import count display. I'm going to use count display as my variable to represent it. And I'm just going to import that directly from count display right here. So right, just like getting the pathing down for my variable, that's where I'm going to be able to find it. Now, and again, just like with how we called app inside of index.js, when we first created this React app, I can literally just do count display right inside of here. Whoops, sorry. This has to be a capital C right here since we are calling it as a component and I can just do it as a self-closing tag. My apologies, this should be capital C. And just like that, now it says, this is my current count. Uh, so quick note about that right there, what I was trying to do, um, you, you need to use capital letters whenever you are creating your own tags like this. So um, default HTML, like JSS, JSX tags, um, they all use lowercase letters. So like div, h1, button, head, body, things like that. Notice that they all use lowercase letters. So how they're differentiated from um, components that you've created as your own HTML slash JSX tags in React is that you need to use capital letters for yours. React will get upset and it'll spit out an angry error message at you if you use a lowercase c, which is why I made that mistake and I quickly fixed mine to be a capital C right here. Now, um, obviously this doesn't actually take care, care of our props problem. So let's say that I want to share this count variable with my count display. Um, well, all that I have to do to actually pass it down is just use a key value pair. So I can say um, count is equal to count. Now this looks a little bit weird because I use the count variable twice, but actually all that I'm doing is I'm taking this count variable and I'm making it the count here. So I can make this difference that it's a bit easier to see, but I can say my count is equal to count. And this count variable is now getting passed down to the count display. But we're, we're, we're not actually doing anything with it. And how we do something with it is that we must accept props as an argument to our function. Now this is an optional argument. If you don't accept it, any props that you are given using this key value pair method right here, Nothing's gonna happen with them. They're just gonna like go off into the void. No need to worry. But if we want them, obviously we have to actually be able to accept props. And so we do, and so we do that by letting it be the function's argument. Now, if we wanna actually access the variable, basically props is just one big object full of all of the key value pairs passed in. So if you have 20, um, you access them just individually, just how you would any variable inside of, of a regular JavaScript object. So I would literally just do props.count right here. And again, since it is a variable, you have to actually embed it using those tags. And um, one other quick thing to note, this should say my count, my bad. There we go, there's my 10. One other quick thing to note with this is that I was actually able to pass down a count variable. So if I click, you'll notice that these that, that these numbers keep updating. Now to you, this might seem like something that should like be like, oh yeah, like it's a use state variable, this should automatically work. But this is actually something that is very difficult to do if you're not using a library like React and it's so important because what this is essentially called is, is that we can propagate state and that it can maintain itself 
through children in, in through children in React. So when I say propagate, basically that means that I have my state that's being tracked by app.js, but I can actually pass that down to my counter display. And as count updates up here on line eight, not only will line 18 be re-rendered, but count display will be re-rendered as well. So now when this new count gets passed in, it'll see, oh, hey, line four, this little h1 tag, it uses this count variable. Let's re-render that too. Um, and the same thing actually works with the setter as well. So if I was to have passed the setter down and, th and then I called the setter from inside of this file, it would go back up to app.js and app.js would say, oh, they just ran the setter. So now I have to re-render line 18 and I have to re-render line four again. So you can call the setter from anywhere. You can call it from the child and it will still update and propagate the state everywhere. Um, it's a great and super, 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 super useful React feature. That's all for this video. Hopefully you guys found this super helpful and I will see you all in the next one. Thank you.